Former Cabinet Minister Peter McKay is joining the Conservative leadership race. Host of Power and Politics, Vashi Capellos is live on the story in Ottawa. So Vashi, what more do we know? We expected this. But what we more did. do we know that now that this is official and you have the official tweet? <laughs> The official tweet, yes, Catherine Cullen, of course, our colleague, has been already reporting it for hours, but Peter McKay just three minutes ago, I think four minutes ago, tweeted the official confirmation of it, and it's very brief. It just says, I think we have the tweet there, we can pull it up, I'm in, stay tuned. My understanding is that he is set to make an announcement later next week, possibly. Uh, I think at least that's the timeline they're working with now, sort of a formal campaign kickoff, but obviously this is the news that we had been expecting since earlier today, the first big official kickoff to this race. Peter McKay, as you mentioned, former cabinet minister under the Harper government, has announced that he is in this race. So what does that mean? That is a great question. We will see. I think it depends on now who else enters in and how quickly they do so. I think we sort of anticipated this kind of a timeline or at least someone having to put their name formally in the running this quickly after the release of the rules over the weekend. Uh, the timeline is very tight. We're looking at basically around just over five months until the actual, uh, the actual election of the next leader. They have a lot of money to raise in that period of time, $300,000. They also have to get a lot of signatures, 3,000, many more than they had to get back in 2017. So it kind of behooves all candidates to make up their minds pretty quickly. We've been speculating for, I guess, about a month and a half now. Uh, but but this is certainly, I think, the you know informal kickoff to this race. We'd already been talking about it for a while, but this changes the dynamic very much so. I mean, this is a very serious contender. It's someone, uh, he is someone who has a lot of name recognition in this country. His name had been bandied about. I remember covering the Conservative Convention, I think it was not last year, but the year before, in the summer in Halifax. And he gave the opening speech to uh, to Andrew Scheer, who had, be, who had just become the leader, not too long before that and the crowd went crazy and at that moment um, our producer uh, Christina Lopez looked at me and we, we both looked at each other and we're like he's running pretty soon right. so at some point yeah. right like you knew the interest was there and we have known for a while but making it official kind of changes the dynamic of this whole race and kicks it off in earnest I think and that's interesting that you mentioned that uh, Peter McKay uh, gave that opening speech to Andrew Shear being the leader way back when, then Peter McKay very publicly <laughs> criticized yes. Andrew Scheer following the election, right? Remind us about, about that and, and what could be this, I don't know whether you want to talk about a policy battle or a geographic battle in terms of the Conservative leadership race. Yeah, there's a couple of things to note. I think you're absolutely right to flag what happened right after the election in that Peter McKay, already people speculating about the possibility of him running for the leadership. This is prior to Andrew Scheer announcing that he's going to resign, starts kind of openly talking about the election and the election outcome and pinning it in a, to a certain degree on Andrew Scheer, saying that there was an open net and they couldn't score or he couldn't score. And then specifically referencing Mr. Scheer's difficulties with social issues um, like abortion and same sex marriage and saying they were a stinking albatross around his neck and that became a real part of the narrative coming out of the election that ultimately led to Mr. Shear's resignation and so at the time he had to walk back the comments and he said that he supported Mr. Shear but obviously when Andrew Shear resigned that kind of changed the game or at least at least publicly changed the game I think when it comes to uh, policy battles as well as geographical representation that is all very much going to inform the next few months and I think also inform the dynamic between the candidates. So in some respects, we'll be looking to see geographically which areas they represent or where they can help buoy the party because we know that while they have a, a real stronghold in Alberta and Saskatchewan and a good showing in Manitoba and BC, they really essentially ended up losing the election in Quebec and mm -hmm. the outskirts of Toronto and the 905 region. So who among the candidates, including Mr. McKay, will be able to tap into those areas, those vulnerabilities and, and try and capitalize? on them that will be a big question policy wise I think this whole discussion around where people stand on social issues where they what kind of policies they envision for the environment economic growth is going to be a big policy as well how different than uh, the Harper what about, years what about those his, kinds of questions uh, sorry to interrupt Vashi, but what about his position on those issues I guess that remains to be seen I, I mean think, yeah. it's been a while right since he's been in the political spotlight so there's been no reason to really kind of grill him or get a sense yes. of where his positions are on those key issues like same-sex marriage, abortion, and the environment. 
I think those are great questions. And mm -hmm. I think because he was ultimately at one point the leader of the progressive side of the party, there is an assumption that he stands, uh, his positions are are certain, uh, are are of a certain uh, way on, on those kinds of issues. But we don't know for sure. And I think mm -hmm. you're absolutely right that he will be questioned in a very different way than he has been. Clearly, he identified those issues as vulnerabilities for the Shear campaign. But whether they'll be vulnerabilities for him or his policies, I think remains to be seen. And I think you're correct to point out that he needs to be grilled on those before we can ascertain mm -hmm. exactly where he sits on those crucial issues. All right. Lots to watch for. Lots to come. Vashi, thank you. That is the host of Thanks, Power & Politics, Vashi Capellos in Ottawa.